Problems scream, solutions whisper. What we see predominantly in news and media is problem-based. David Bornstein, a journalist, observed that if we were to run a family or a business by only sharing problems, we'd run those entities in the ground. So the question to ask is, does negative news media have a similar effect on our nation? Research would indicate yes. Research shows that when we watch news, it increases both our stress and our anxiety. The antidote to a problem is a solution. I want humanity to get access to these incredible cures. And we know that not all solutions are created equal. We know that some solutions are good, better, and best, and some solutions are just bad. We've seen examples of individuals or organizations donating clothes to developing countries and that putting local textile makers out of business. But I don't want to focus on the negative. I want to give you guys some examples of what great solutions look like. They often have the following four characteristics. Scale. These solutions don't just reach one village. They can replicate and reach even millions of people. They have impact. They don't just look at the symptom of a problem, but they look at the root cause of a problem. They're sustainable. They often seek multiple streams of revenue, not just funding from one major donor or one grant, and they promote self-reliance. They don't just teach a man to fish, but in many instances, they teach a man or woman how to sell that fish. I know this is a quick overview, but there are actually organizations dedicated to vetting solutions like this. Some of my favorite include the Skoll Foundation, Ashoka, the Peary Foundation, and the Solutions Journalism Network. So if problems scream and solutions whisper, how might we get solutions to rise above the noise? This was a challenge I presented to a group of students last year. And as we researched, we found one idea that both alleviated stress and increased learning. Laughter. Laughter has shown to reduce our stress and improve our short-term memory. So if you lose your keys, try laughing. I did it this morning and it worked. One study showed that those who watched the Colbert Report, a comedic news source, they were more informed about campaign finance than those who watched other news channels. So, the formula that my students and I came up with looks like this. We need to understand problems, but we also need to share great solutions. And that's something that everyone in this room can do. When you have, see a problem in the news, let's start seeking these great solutions and sharing them. Bonus points if you include laughter. Would you guys like to see this in action? Okay. Well, let's bring out to the stage Zach Atherton, Improv comedian and BYU student. Let's hear it for Zach. Let's talk about food waste. In the United States, we throw out about 133 billion pounds of food every year. To put that into perspective, that's the equivalent of 191 Empire State Buildings, 1,300 Titanics, or half of your mom. Ooh, burn! And this isn't just fast food quesadilla garbage we're throwing away. These are fruits and vegetables that took time, money, and 80% of our fresh water to produce. This is food we should be holding on to, but we throw it away for dumb reasons. It's like when a girl you're dating breaks up with you because you're too nice or ultra sensitive or her second cousin. <laughs> Come on, Gretchen, I haven't even met Grandma Bess. <laughs> and do you know what vegetable we throw out the most? The potato. That's right, we as Americans that pride ourselves in tater tots and french fries throw out a whopping 60% of our spuds. I mean, what is the point of Idaho if we're just gonna throw away the one thing they contribute to this nation? <laughs> Their second biggest claim to fame is that Sarah Palin was born there and then chose to move to the frozen tundra of Alaska. <laughs> What's even more crazy is that a large portion of this produce that we throw out is perfectly edible. It's only flaws that it's ugly or blemished in some way. We treat selecting produce like we're on The Bachelor. 
We go through this whole rigmarole to find the perfect one when we're probably just going to dump it anyway. <laughs> and one of the reasons we feel justified in throwing away perfectly good food is because of expiration dates. But the reality is, is that those dates don't even tell us when food spoils. They're like Kanye West. They insert themselves into everything and demand to be taken seriously. <laughs> I am the greatest and most creative expiration date of the world. And what's even more crazy is that federal law doesn't even require expiration dates at all, except for baby food and formula, which is stupid because babies can't even read. <laughs> and not only do we, as consumers, follow these arbitrary expiration dates, but so do supermarkets. Many grocery stores throw out food even before its sell-by date. That's like getting rejected on Tinder even before downloading the app. <laughs> Give me a chance and then swipe left. <laughs> Folks, I want to introduce you to a guy who always swipes right on expired food. Let's bring out CEO of Eco Scraps and Ultimate Dumpster Diver, Dan Blake. <laughs> Dan, now your company, Eco Scraps, it takes 100 million pounds of food waste every year yep. and turns it into fertilizer. Would it be safe to say that you have the crappiest job in the world? <laughs> well, we make soils and plant foods out of composted food waste, so there's actually no poop of any kind. Ah, uh, so that's what they meant when they said you take no crap from nobody. <laughs> now, Dan, uh, I read up on you, and you were actually an English major before you decided to start Eco Scraps. How did you go from reading Twilight novels to sifting through garbage? <laughs> Fair question. So I was at an all-you-can-eat French toast buffet, had a nice big plate of French toast, uh, and it ended up throwing the, the leftovers away. Oh, to give to the homeless? Uh, in the garbage can. To start your first compost pile. Uh, actually, just really throwing it away. And I'm trying to help you out here, embarrassing <laughs> You know, I, I then uh, learned that 40% of all the food that we grow ends up in the landfill, and it just seemed like there's a better use of uh, all that food waste. But most of the food your company takes is fruits and vegetables. I mean, what's the big deal with that? I mean, every time I throw out my apple core out of my car on a pedestrian, I know that I'm justified because it's just going to decompose, right? <laughs> so it is true that uh, food decomposes in landfills, but uh, it emits methane as it, uh, as it rots in landfills. If you compost it, you eliminate the, the methane emissions. I see. My uncle actually used to make methane in his Winnebago. <laughs> now, your company, um, it works a lot with stores that would otherwise throw away food, and you asked me not to mention any names, but you had an interesting story with a very well-known chain of supermarkets that are known for rolling back prices. Let's just call them Target. Um, can you please tell me about that? So it, it wasn't Target. I know, that's why I put it in quotes. <laughs> All right. uh, so uh, a few years ago, we actually got a call from a food bank that had received a, a really large donation, a full semi-truck, actually, of just oranges. So this food bank manager called us saying, um, you know, we want to feed people a, a well-balanced diet. Uh, we can't just give them oranges. Can you take the leftovers? You know, if we just feed these people oranges, we're going to end up with a, a lot of homeless people that have diarrhea. <laughs> And an army of uh, homeless people with diarrhea would definitely add to the methane problem. <laughs> now, what do you do with all these oranges? So, in, in this case, instead of sending it to the landfill, we would take it to one of our composting facilities. We compost it, uh, and then use that compost in our soils and plant foods. It's then sold through retailers, uh, many of which are the, the retailers that give us the, the food waste. So what's the shelf life of your product? What's stopping it from just ending up in a landfill anyway? So that's the great thing about compost. It just gets better with age. Uh, it's a lot like wine in, in that aspect. You know what else gets better with age? I don't. Your mom. Ooh! Compliment! <laughs> I'm ashamed to say it, but you are a greedy capitalist. <laughs> and how do you sleep at night knowing that you make a profit off of solving a world problem? Well, I'd like to think you don't have to choose between making money and doing good. Typical capitalist answer. <laughs> um, in, the, in the case of EcoScraps, we decided that a for-profit business model, one, would allow us to be uh, self-sufficient, and uh, it would also allow us to scale much faster so that we could have a, a larger impact. Interesting. 
So Dan, unlike you, I actually finished my English degree, and uh, I've only read books about gardening and farming. What can a normal person like me do to help solve food waste? So there's actually a lot that individuals can do. Everything from growing your own food, whether it's in your backyard garden or you know a small garden on the, the kitchen countertop, looking at your shopping habits, buying less food more frequently, uh, looking at your cooking habits and portion size. And in the case that you do have food waste, um, it's actually a lot easier than people think to start your own backyard compost pile. Those are all really good ideas. Now, you've had a lot of interesting happenings with your journey with Eco Scraps that I want to share with the audience tonight. Uh, so we're going to play a little game. It's a game called Blake or Fake. I'm going to give you an interesting factoid about yourself. If it's true, say Blake. If it's not true, say Fake. Great. Okay. Number one, when you first started out, you and your roommates would compost in the parking lot of your apartment complex. That is true, Blake. Number two, when you were making the compost, you'd actually play real-life fruit ninja to chop up the fruit. That did happen a few times. <laughs> you know, it's actually not as easy as it looks. I tried it out myself, and I made a little video for you. I don't remember it being that hard. <laughs> Excuse me, Danny. Last thing for, uh, for Blake or Fake is Snoop Dogg actually endorsed your company on Twitter. Yeah, so he actually used our product in his community gardens. So I'm actually going to call Fake on this one. Let me read to you the tweet he allegedly wrote. And I quote, with the help of Eco Scraps, we're making sure our community gardens are not only bountiful, but organic and healthy. This is the same guy who tweeted earlier this month, and I quote, Steve Harvey, my own cheat, SO to my Romanian friends, that boss doggin' coming through real soon, hashtag visit Bogata. <laughs> Do you think he actually wrote that about your company? Realistically, it was probably his publicist, but do you think you could do better? Are you challenging me right now, Dan Blake? If you think you're up for it, I, uh, I think I am. Dan Blake, I'm gonna do you one better. Not only can I sound more like Snoop Dogg than his publicist, but I can rap as good as him. <laughs> oh, yeah. But you gotta drop me a beat right now. Right flow. now? Right now, drop me a beat, Dr. Trey. All right. <laughs> yeah, 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 let's give it up for Dan. Yes. Nice, yeah. Uh. Food waste, food waste, in my mouth a bad taste. Tons of discard, degrees from restaurants and food base. And what you ask them to use if they say no thanks? Cast it away, like in that movie with Tom Hanks. Thank goodness we got someone on our side like Dan Blake, who always eats his food even when he's on his second plate. It's not up for debate. Eco scraps is great, turning food to compost, shipping it out in freights from anywhere in the United States. So join the revolution and end food waste. <laughs> <laughs>